Coming up on ATV News, a family mourns the death of their little girl. Find out how the community is helping them cope with this loss. Black Friday might be old news in the near future. Find out why another day could take over. And ATV News gets down and dirty. Thanksgiving didn't stop Aggie football and basketball from bringing their A-game. I'll have the results on ATV Sports. Outside temperatures are rising and falling faster than the tide. And where is our snow? We'll have answers for you coming up on ATV Weather. All that and more on this week's ATV News. For the first time ever, your Utah State football team is WAC champions. Welcome to ATV News. We've got Ramina joining us a little early. Ramina, what a great season it's been for our football team. Yes, it has. It has been amazing. And that game was extraordinary to see the players, the coaches, and the fans celebrate like that. And I hope that the guys do very well at the Idaho Potato Bowl coming up next month. Uh, but I'll have more on our football team and basketball team later on in the show on ATV Sports. Okay, great. Well, we'll be looking forward to that, Romina. We all heard the story on the news last week. A young girl was accidentally impaled by a wooden blind and died. Brianna Bodley is outside right now to tell us more. That's right, Kelsey. Rumors have been swirling about this incident. I spoke with the family to find out what exactly happened and how their actions might actually inspire you. It sunk in and it's going to keep sinking in. It's, I don't know how to deal with it. Nicole Clark was not your average 11-year-old. She would help anybody. She would do anything for anybody. It was her parents she was helping on the 17th, the day of the accident. With both mom and dad sick in bed, Nicole first made breakfast for the family and then went outside to take care of the dogs. When she ran upstairs to go back inside, Nicole tripped and fell on a broken blind slat she'd been playing with. She come back in, Dad, I'm hurt. Intruding about an inch into her body, just under the collarbone, Nicole's family says it was just enough to sever an artery. An inch to the left or the right, and Nicole might still be alive today. We saw it, and we can't believe it. I don't think anyone would have ever thought something like this could happen. Her grandfather says it is the support and love of the community that is helping Nicole's family stay strong in this difficult time. At this time of year, you're supposed to be thankful. The people changed our mind. We are thankful everywhere, everyone. They do still have a lot of financial concerns, especially because of the medical bills. If you do want to help them out, you can go to the U.S. Bank and deposit under Nicole Clark's name. Thanks, Brianna. Fighting crowds and waiting in endless lines to get your Black Friday deals can be a hassle. Caesar Rabbit shows how you can trim down your Christmas list without leaving your home. It is not a lie to say that every day, Americans are getting used to the convenience of the web. With growth in technology, people can buy what they want, whenever they want, wherever they want. And with that to say, you can buy something at home, and if you're on the road and forgot something, you can easily buy it off your smartphone. But for the last several years, shoppers have been leaning to participating in what is now called Cyber Monday which usually takes place on the Monday following Black Friday. With Cyber Monday, you're at home, your computer's right there, and you're just browsing around looking on what you like and stuff. But I have noticed since when I was looking on Cyber Monday stuff, I mean, they had some good deals, but like Black Friday is ideal for technology. Online spending rose 17% on Cyber Monday compared to last year. Consumers spent about $1.46 billion to top the $1.25 billion a year ago. With this to say, 
The convenience of mobile devices is boosting sales for online retailers. With more than 18% of shoppers using a mobile device, a 70% increase from 2011. But this doesn't mean that shoppers will turn into Cyber Monday. Others still like the madness of Black Friday. I prefer Black Friday because I just went in like 15 minutes before the thing opened and I could get my stuff within like 20 minutes and I was out with, with what I wanted. I could play with it the same night. Caesar Abbott, ATV News. If you miss Cyber Monday, some retailers have extended their deals through the weekend. The Utah State Board of Regents approved seven acres of land for Utah State University to use for education and research at their regular meeting on November 16th. The land approval will affect the USU Eastern Campus in Price, Utah. The property is part of 25 acres donated to the university last year, but until now could not be used for educational purposes. Resources play a major role in the economy of Eastern Utah, and administrators say the land will be used to develop energy, research facilities and programs. You may have heard of No Shade November, but some students are growing facial hair for a different reason. USU students came together and put a smile on one struggling man's face by putting beards on their own. This has given me a lot of courage in helping me to know that you guys are there for me and I'm going to do my part. This is Ben Rose, a firefighter and father of five. Ben is also battling stage 3 myxoid liposarcoma, a rare cancer that grows in fatty tissue. No, ben, Students at Utah State University tried making his fight with cancer a little easier by starting a fundraising campaign called Beards for Ben. Men grew beards for Ben all month and then entered into a beard showcase on Tuesday night. Then the judges picked the top 10. Contestants enjoyed being creative with their beards and all to help someone in need. I love doing different designs on my beard. I used to hate to shave, but now I just, I've actually looked online for just different designs and this is one of the craziest that I've done. And those who couldn't grow facial hair like this found other ways to give to the cause. Gentry Grossen was the only female finalist and not for the hair on her face, but hair growing elsewhere. I have a few great friends um, and they started this fundraiser and they told me about it and I was like, well, I don't have any facial hair, but what about leg hair? And they were like, yeah, do it. So like this whole month, like I just was secretive about it and only a few people knew. And then today showed them off. I don't like facial hair, but if they're gonna grow it, I'm gonna grow my leg hair. All proceeds from the event went to Ben and his family. Ben says he wants university students to know that his kids will have a better Christmas because of your donations. When we come back, find out how some students predicted the outcome on one of the biggest political battles. And are you ready for finals? We'll show you some tips to help you gear up. Meet David York renowned physiologist at Utah State University's Center for Advanced Nutrition. Meet Andrew Bergen, avid mountain biker and a sophomore biology major working with Dr. York. Together they are studying the plagues of our century, researching ways to reduce obesity, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hoping to shape the future. G morning sunshine. Wakey wakey. Text me. I think it might be one of the Are your parents home later? We can hang. L U V love you. J K. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. X O. Would you dream of something I did? Are you on your way to the mall? Lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. All your cares are over. Not so fast there, pupil. 
you still need to decide on a career. Don't worry about that announcer guy. Come on into the Career Center located in the University Inn and discuss your goals and concerns with advisors who are here to help you get into the fields that you're interested in. There are many resources including counseling, a career coach, publications, professional interviews, and much more to help you get that job. The Career Center, 797 quadruple seven. While you were watching the close election earlier this month, one group of vo voters already knew who won. Romina Nadakovich shows you how they can predict such an outcome. Typing away, Sterling Morris and Josh Light look like normal students, but they are behind Politicket, a new social media outlet that predicts elections. A number of our team members noticed that there was a connection between people's activity online and how influential they were. Um, so we developed the IT score to measure a politician's digital influence. IT score is the measure of a politician's digital influence through social media. Through the IT score, they were able to predict the presidential election with 90% accuracy. With this tour bus being their home for three months, Politicket interviewed politicians like Chicago's Marcus Lewis, Michigan's Ken Proctor, and Nashville, Tennessee's Pat Riley. They were able to make some fun trailers as well with politicians like Gary Johnson as they traveled all 48 states. Through a database of all the politicians in the U.S., Politicket looks for correlations and builds algorithms to see what works best. People are having conversations in the internet all the time, and they're reacting to those conversations. We gather all that information, and we use a machine learning algorithm to calculate how people feel about a politician in real time. Politicket also has all of a politician's social networks in one place, which makes it a lot easier to follow the changes in social media. If you want to know what the media is saying, Google it. If you want to know what people are thinking, politic it. Politic it is changing the way we view politics, and they've only just begun. Romina Nadakovic, ATV News. Politic it has been around for a little over a year, and they are already prepping for, two th for the 2014 midterm elections. Final exams. Did we just raise your blood pressure? Our Steve Crass shows you ways to cope so your GPA doesn't affect your BPM. The clicking of a keyboard, the double checking sources, the look of sheer exhaustion. All common sights this week on campus as students ready themselves for final examinations. USU Learning Specialist Debbie Jensen is all too familiar with these traits and she says they're mostly due to one thing. Procrastination. And one of the reasons we procrastinate, it's really natural and students will say, oh, I'm a bad procrastinator and I shouldn't do it, and yet they do do it. Jessica Sonderegger is not afraid to admit she fits that category. I procrastinate as a means of productivity because I know that if I get to the, the very end to it and it's, it's due tomorrow and I have to do it, there's nothing else I can do or I'm going to fail, then I perform. Debbie says there's only one way to fix that. Just start. Just say, how much can I get done in 20 minutes? And then give yourself a reward. As a young college student, Jessica didn't care when she finished school. I feel like I do, I'm doing okay for myself this semester, but in semesters past, very mediocre. Very mediocre. Now a married senior, she wants out, and she's got a new plan do really well and actually finish so that I can graduate in the spring. Debbie's job at the university's Academic Resource Center allows her to provide a free service to stressed out students. It's a place full of techniques to perfect things like study habits and doing better on tests. Talk to us about it because it's usually just a matter of some study behaviors and changing some of the myth. Steve Crass, ATV News. The Academic Resource Center has a website to help you get started on being a better student. You can find it at usu.edu and search Academic Resource Center. And with finals quickly approaching, you may be getting ready to pull a few all-nighters. But could this be bad for your health? Lauren, Lauren Brewer shows you how a good night's rest could make that two-hour exam a little easier. Sleep has been a challenge ever since we had the electric light. Sleep. We all need it, but even though we need it, it's the one thing most people would be willing to go without. They don't have to be accountable to anyone uh, for their sleep. 
So it's one of the few optional activities they have. And a few people would say that cutting sleep is necessary, especially if you're a working student. It's the only way to get everything done that I need to get done. And for most people, cutting sleep is really a pros versus con thing. Sleep doesn't affect my schoolwork as much as not doing it would. But experts say that people who do this don't just risk their health. Someone who's moderately sleep deprived is impaired in ways that are not dissimilar from someone being legally intoxicated. So not only is sleep important, but not getting enough is dangerous. But most of us can't change our schedules to get more sleep. There are a few things that you can do to make your sleep the most restful sleep you've ever had. Make sure that you go to bed and get up at the same time. This gives your body a routine. Make sure your sleeping area is just for sleep. Doing homework and other things makes it hard for your body to know if it should sleep or be awake. Make sure the place you get sleep is restful. Tastes differ on what is restful, but basically that means you make the place comfy enough for you to sleep. These simple things add up and can make the sleep you need better. If you feel like you're not getting enough rest at night, there's a workshop on campus December 4th called Getting the Most Out of Your Sleep. Pigs, wrestling, and a whole lot of mud. Kelton Wells shows you how students came together to raise money and make a mess. They ran, squirmed, and even greased up. But it wasn't enough to keep these pigs from getting canned. It's called pig wrestling, and even though my grandpa probably would have called it wrestling, it's as popular now as it was 80 years ago. A team of four has a certain amount of time to put a pig butt first in a barrel in the middle of the ring. It's the second year for the event at Utah State as a fundraiser for the USU Animal Science Club. And while the turnout wasn't as high as event organizers were hoping, there was plenty of this to go around. Uh, to get really muddy and that happened, so yeah. And more people. We, we expected a lot of people, but well. But for the few people who did show up, the event was very popular. <laughs> Even for Lauren Nielsen, whose husband says she has a severe phobia of animals. I didn't really know what to expect because I'm not a farm girl or anything with the outdoors, so I didn't really know what to expect, but it was really fun. She loved the pig squeal. No, I didn't. <laughs> Even three-year-old Mason had a good time. Did you have fun? Yeah. Holbrook says the event was bigger last year, and they hope to increase turnout in the future. To make it an annual thing, we'd probably want to have a set date every year, and so then we advertise it to not only just the College of Ag, is who we targeted, but probably to all of the USU campus. Because after all, who doesn't love some good old-fashioned country fun? <laughs> Reporting from USU's South Farm in Wellsville, Kelton Wells, ATV News. <laughs> the Animal Science Club hopes to continue the pig wrestling event next year. Well, it's looking a little foggy outside, but we'll see how the weather's going to be. Brianna Bodily will have your weather forecast right after this break. The Copy Center on the first floor of the TSC is open Monday through Friday, 7 to 6, for all your document needs. Let the trained staff help you print important documents. Services include binding, color copies, custom gifts from your favorite photos, and last-minute items like pencils, report covers, and especially Scantrons. The Copy Center. We're here to help. Man, what's up? Man, I'm out the club, right? I'm with two beautiful girls. We're drunk, man. We're so drunk. You got a ride home or are you driving? Yeah. I'm going to push the Cavalier into gear. Push, push the, the Cavalier, Cavalier into gear. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, man. Don't drive. I'm on my way. Don't worry. I'll be there in a sec. Important. Take care of your ears. The USU Speech, Language, and Hearing Center offers a full audiometric evaluation. A hearing test for students costs just $15 and is also open to the general public. Custom earphones and plugs can also be made along with a full examination of the overall health of your ears. Hearing. It's a precious thing. 
Have you guys noticed that the temperatures have been a little bit crazy lately? Yes, I have. Actually, this morning I was dressed all warm. I had like a scarf and a bunch of layers, and then I was hot, so I changed, and then I came back and I was cold. Like, what's up with that? <laughs> Two hours ago it was hot, and now it's freezing cold again. Yeah, exactly. And here's the interesting thing. So right now our temperatures are a little bit screwy, but our weather's gonna get even more so, and I'm so excited to show you. Let's start, first of all, with a satellite image to see exactly what is going on out there. As you can see, right down here in Logan area, oh, pardon me, right down here in Logan area, you can see that there is some precipitation coming in. Not very much. This is why you can see clouds in the sky, but you're not filling them. No rain, no snow, just a little bit of cloudiness. However, this is about to change. Let's move on to a graphic that's a little bit more recent. This is the one right here. As you can see, this is from 12 o'clock today, and right now, we don't have very much precipitation at all in Logan right here. Instead, what we have is a little bit, but not enough that's showing up on the radar. However, if we watch this, this is basically our prediction of what's going to happen from 12 o'clock tonight all the way until 12 o'clock Monday morning. You can see that this green right here, the dark green, that's our precipitation, it's gonna come in and settle right in here, right around Logan area. So what does this mean for our five-day forecast? I am so excited to tell you because to be quite honest, I'm sick of not having any snow. I'm a skiing girl and I can't wait. So to start off with, we're gonna have our typical 54 degree weather, that's today, up and down a little bit, a little bit cloudy. However, towards the end of the week, we're gonna see a lot more precipitation. We're gonna have rain right here, lots of rain on Saturday, and a little bit of rain Sunday morning, and that is when we're gonna make the change that I am so excited for. On Sunday, fingers crossed, we're gonna see a little bit of snow, and it will carry through until Monday, and then, Please, I hope that this is how it works out. Maybe we can all hit the slopes, take a day off of school, maybe take a little break, because I know I'm a little bit stressed and I bet you are too. So that's all we have for our ATV weather. Stay tuned, we're gonna have ATV sports coming up. Career Services is in the business of doing four primary things. First is career exploration. The second is co-op internship opportunities. The third area is career employment. And lastly, we provide assistance with grad school prep and testing. We're open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Students can come in to make an appointment. We're located on the ground level of the University Inn and our webpage is www.usu.edu forward slash career. Hey there Aggies, welcome to ATV Sports, I'm Romina Nadakovic. While all of us were away on Thanksgiving break eating turkey, and I was definitely stuffing my face with pie, Aggie football and basketball were here creating W's. Let's talk about football first. The boys have made the 2012 season memorable and record breaking. The Aggies were ranked 25 in the nation by the Associated Press prior to facing Idaho. They capped off their season milestone with its first 10th win in school history and clinched its first outright conference championship since 1936 with a 45-9 blowout. I mentioned a few firsts, so let's show you a graphic of all the Aggie firsts, and there you have it. First time being, being WAC champs, first time winning 10 games in a season, first time being ranked in the top 20, and beating that foe of ours, University of Utah, after a 12-game losing streak. Way to go, Aggies. Before the game, Utah State honored its 18 seniors with a pregame ceremony after the game. USU was presented the Western Athletic Conference Championship Trophy by WAC officials and then accepted a second straight bid to the famous Idaho Potato Bowl with a massive celebration on the field. Some of the numbers from the Idaho game include 250 total yards of offense, getting 133 on the ground and 117 through the air. But the Aggies took advantage of several short fields set up by our amazing defense. Creating four turnovers on the day, Utah State held Idaho to 210 yards of total offense, including 158 on the ground and just 52 in the air. In fact, 
Those 52 passing yards by Idaho are the fewest by an Aggie opponent since 1998, where North Texas passed just 45 yards. Following its 45-9 win against Idaho, in its season finale, Utah State climbed five spots. Associated Press topped 25 as the Aggies are now ranked 20th in the nation. Did you hear me? 20th in the nation. USU also entered the ESPN US Today coaches poll this week for the first time in school history and is ranked 22nd nationally in the AP poll. Utah State garnered 274 votes, up from 82 votes a week ago. When the Aggies were tied for 25th in the nation in the coaches poll, USU received 260 votes this week after getting 74 votes last week when it was ranked 26th in the nation. Utah State will conclude its 2012 season at the famous Idaho Potato Bowl on Saturday, December 15th, December 15th at 2.30 against a team yet to be announced from the Mid-American Conference. USU, who also played in the 2011 famous Idaho Potato Bowl, is appearing in back-to-back -back bowl games for the first time this school year. And as we're just, we're just going to move on now to basketball. And... The Aggies are working it. So, okay, now let's move on to Aggie basketball. Junior center Jared Shaw had 16 points and 12 rebounds for a second career double-double as Utah State used a 12-2 run during the final five minutes of the game to post a 65-55 home win against in-state rival Weber State. In all these, in all there, excuse me, sorry, there were 24 lead changes and the game was tied 16 times during the night. With the win, Utah State improves to 3-1 on the season and 29-1 at home against in-state opponents under Stu Morrill. The Aggies have now won 27 straight home games against Utah teams overall. USU improves to 38-12 against teams from the state of Utah during the last 14 years. The Aggies also improved to 39-26 all-time against the Wildcats, including a 24-8 mark in Logan. In all, USU has now won 11 of the last 13 games played in the series, including eight straight home games. Shaw, who also had a career high three blocks in the game, was 7-12 from the field and 2-2 two two at the free throw line. For his 16 points, junior guard Preston Medlin added 17 points as he was 4-8 of eight from the field, 1-2 of two from three-point range, and 8-12 for 12 at the free throw line. Medlin also tied his career high with nine rebounds to go along with four assists and a career high three steals in 38 minutes. Sophomore forward Ben Clifford was the third Aggie to score in double figures as he finished with a season high 11 points on two of three shooting from the field and seven for eight at the charity stripe. Senior forward Keyshawn Reed added eight points, seven rebounds, and a career high trying, tying three blocks. While junior forward Danny Berger also had eight points to go along with four boards. Whew, that is a mouthful of wonderful stats. Last night, the Aggies rallied back from a 15-point deficit in the first half to beat Santa Clara in overtime, winning 80-78. to De December 5th, the Aggies go down to Provo, and on the 8th, they're back home. So that's it for ATV Sports. Thanks for watching. Stick around for more ATV news. Jazz might not be as popular as it was, but the students here at USU are keeping it alive and well. Last night was the Jazz Orchestra's last performance of the semester. The ensemble included a full band from saxophones, trumpets, guitars, and even the xylophone. The Jazz Ensemble was directed by Greg Wheeler, a music professor here on campus. The Jazz Orchestra was directed by John Goodmanson, an associate professor of music. They ended the night by a guest, with a guest appearance by Dr. Max Madsen, a new professor of the Trumpet Studio here at USU. Well, thanks for watching ATV News. Well, you just have a great week, Aggies.